генеральный спонсор программы – компания Leverage Investments, лидер рынка недвижимости Северного Кипра. Добрый день, дорогие телезрители! В эфире программа «Объектив» и я ее ведущая Олеся Ларина. Сегодня мы затронем очень актуальную тему на настоящий момент. Это объединение двух частей острова, северной части, турецкой части и южной части острова. Потому что об объединении после прихода к власти нового президента Мустафа Акенджи 30 апреля 2015 года не говорит разве что ленивый. Поэтому, хотя наша передача не носит политического характера, мы не можем остаться в стороне от этой проблемы, потому что все же мы здесь живем, очень многие здесь имеют работы, кто-то имеет вид на жительство, кто-то создал здесь свои семьи. Поэтому, как пройдут переговоры, будет касаться нас также. Для начала... Мне хотелось бы зачитать небольшие новостные отрывки перед тем, как я представлю своего гостя. Президент Грека Киприотов Анастасиадис выступил перед парламентом, где публично проинформировал о результатах переговоров по объединению острова. Это вот как раз буквально было несколько дней назад, потому что сегодня они снова встречаются с нашим президентом Мустафа Аканджи. Им был предложен план... И им было предложено для двух общин трезво оценить их будущее в разделенной стране или убрать разделительную линию и объединиться под федеральным управлением. Несмотря на некоторые различия и разногласия, переговоры имеют положительную динамику. Одним из разногласий является структура федерального управления. Мустафа Кинджи предлагает ротацию президентства, то есть чтобы президенты по очереди занимали свой пост, Анастасиадис предлагает следовать законодательным нормам ЕС, где президенты избираются простым, где президенты избирают простым большинством. Ну, сами мы понимаем, что а, большинство острова составляют греки-киприоты. По некоторым вопросам управления две общины достигли согласия. Палата представителей должна составлять а, 48 членов, 36 из которых будут греки-киприоты и 12 турко-киприоты, исходя из соотношения состава населения 1 к 4. Верхняя палата Сенат должен состоять из 40 членов, здесь должно быть равенство 20 на 20, и выборы будут э, на общинной основе, чтобы обеспечить политическое равенство. Ну и, естественно, самый сложный вопрос — это вопрос о территориях, э, которые отложили на самый последний этап переговоров, считая его очень болезненным при достижении компромиссов. Итак, э, это был небольшой э, такой экскурс, буквально в то время, что происходит несколько дней назад. А сейчас все-таки я наконец-то представлю своего гостя, я не буду вас томить. Сегодня в гостях у меня Энгин uh, Шах. Welcome to our program. Thank you very much. Uh, наша программа сегодня будет проходить на английском языке. Uh, в то же время она будет снабжена русскими субтитрами, поэтому... Uh, наши соотечественники, которые uh, не знают английского языка, смогут прочесть это на русском языке. Почему я пригласила именно этого гостя? Потому что хотелось бы посмотреть на проблему изнутри, и не только нашими глазами, глазами приезжих людей сюда, а глазами человека, который застал еще события до 1974 -го года. Поэтому uh, передача все-таки носит немножечко символическое название. Кипр до 1974 -го года и после 1974 -го года. Итак, once again, welcome to our program. I'm very glad 
that you had your time to come here and uh, because I know that uh, when everything happened in Cyprus in 1974, at least when the Cyprus was um, divided into two parts, you were already how many years old? I was eight. You were eight. I born uh, 1966. Okay. So when the uh, 1974 war starts, I was eight years old. You were eight. So uh, there is a problem with my mathematics. <laughs> I thought you were 12. <laughs> but still, uh, do you remember that time? Uh, do you remember those years? Can you tell us what happened before the official division of the island? Um, like I told you, I was eight. But from my childhood, uh, most thing. I remember from this this time of the, my life, which is 1974. Uh, of course, I was eight. I can't remember everything, but uh, when the war started, 20th of July, 1974. I don't know if you know that, but long time ago, in the summertime, we were sleeping outside the house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then my my mom put some uh, beds top of the house, top of the roof. Then I was mm -hmm. sleeping there. Suddenly, I hear some noises, some warplanes. Then, when I open my eyes, just bombing around everywhere, smokes I have seen. So I remember lots of things. Whatever I seen, still there in front of my eyes. So I can tell you everything actually. But program is not that long to tell you this story. But it was very sad, very bad. People left their houses, like we did, too. And Where were you born? Which city? I born uh, the village called Görnec, mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, which not is very far from Famagusta. Greek side? Or no, 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 no. It's, it's on this side. It's always been Turkish Cypriot village, mm -hmm. uh, Görnec village. It is uh, not very far from Famagusta, mm -hmm. uh, our village. Uh, I born there. I grew up there. So uh, at least, uh, if we not speak about the war, because uh, actually people can read what happened during those days. Yes. Uh, what kind of life? Because actually, as far as we know from the books and mm -hmm. from internet, <coughs> from any other source of information, everything started uh, in 1960 uh, when uh, English people left the island, when they gave uh, the independency to the island. So from that day, because maybe not it's not you who remembers those events because physically you cannot remember this, but maybe you were told by your parents yes. how was the life during those times, how people live, do people live together, or do they have, did they have common marriages, did they start fighting all of a sudden? Just how do you uh, evaluate those events? This is uh, actually not from 1960, after the uh, British left the island. This is goes a little bit back. So when we're talking about back, is first time when the British got to island, uh, 1878, they put their rules in the island. And uh, after the First World War, uh, when the Ottomans lost the war, uh, Britain, they invade the island. Uh, mm -hmm. And then... Uh, they start uh, using their colonial time mm -hmm. uh, in the island after 1923 and 1955 big trouble start firstly between uh, Greeks and uh, British just a second I will interrupt you okay. because I didn't uh, tell our viewers that Engin at the same time uh, he is involved in tourism so mm -hmm. he can speak about uh, Cyprus history so long, but he will be uh, very short about yes, this, yes. because uh, it's not that I'm going to make you speaking shortly, mm -hmm. but just give us the history yes. briefly, so we will understand what yes. happened before this, yes. uh, all this trouble started. Yeah, 1955, uh, because the Greek Cypriot, they wanted the independent in the island, mm -hmm. uh, they start arguing with the British, uh, till 1960 and 1960 Britain gave up and they left us island so our government which is Republic of Cyprus which is still the uh, uh, other side on the south Cyprus they're using this government start 1960 
like partnership between Turkish Cypriot and Greek Cypriots. But after three years, 1963, uh, Mr. Makarios, uh, he just he had a plans, Cyprus just for himself. Pope Makarios. Yes, yes, Bishop Makarios. Bishop. He was the head of the Greek Cypriots as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, he started uh, going on Turkish Cypriots. So Turkish Cypriots had enough with them and they left the government to them. And then from 1963 till 1974, just Greek Cypriots been using our government, uh, Republic of Cyprus, and Turkish Cypriot was out, They're just watching. And in 1974, everybody thinking, actually, Greeks and Turks start fighting in here. But Why uh, Turkish people were just watching? Why didn't they take active part? also in the ruling of the country. For me, uh, you know, for I'm Cypriot. For me, uh, Turkish Cypriots made the biggest mistake, left the government to Greek Cypriots. And the United Nations asked the Turkish Cypriot, come back, get in your government, and then carry on using your partnership with the Greek Cypriots. But they didn't. Because the both sides had uh, ideas. Probably you heard about the Enosis mm -hmm. and Taksim. Yeah. And Osis was like uh, Cyprus, all Cyprus belongs to Greece, just the Greeks. And the Turkish Cypriots, uh, Taksim means is just make it two piece in Ireland, mm -hmm. Turkish and the Greeks separately. But uh, this Greeks never wanted this. So from 1963 till 1974, uh, they argue small one, big one, and uh, till, uh, after 1974, when the Greeks starts, Mm -hmm. Just to start the killing the Turkish uh, Cypriots. Uh, of course, uh, Turkey had a uh, right to come to Ireland because in 1970, sorry, 1960, when uh, Turkey, Greece, and Britain had an agreement mm -hmm. about the Republic of Cyprus, they had a right to actually come into Cyprus and stop Greek Cypriots uh, killing the Turkish Cypriots. So you're against the term Turkish invasion? Uh, for me, uh, I can't say Turkish invasion. Turkey came here for a peace, 1974. Everything was okay. Uh, my view, my view at the moment, uh, I think uh, I call myself Cypriot. I born in Cyprus. I'm Cypriot. Of course, we are originally from Turkey 500 years ago. Uh, but if you're born in Cyprus, we are Cypriots. Same as the Greek Cypriots. They are other side. They call them Cypriots as well. So at the moment, I, I bet 70% Cypriots, they want one island, mm -hmm. one uh, republic again here. But unfortunately, this will never happen. My view. 70% uh, do you mean uh, only Turkish or from no, both no, sides? All, all, yeah, both sides. Uh, Cypriot, real Cypriot, who are Cypriot, not the like uh, people come from Turkey after 1974 mm -hmm. and they have a uh, North Cyprus ID card. Uh, I'm not counting them. I'm talking about the Cypriots like me who born in Cyprus, who their families mm -hmm. are Cypriots. Uh, because they pay, these people pay so much uh, uh, before with the wars and they lost their lives, they lost mm -hmm. their loved ones, they lost their lands and houses than everything. So they learn something. And then I, I don't believe any war will happen in Cyprus again. Yes, we also don't want any war to happen <laughs> because there are so many wars in the world already yes, that absolutely. Uh, we can say that maybe we are stepi stepping into the third world war already because yes. you know that in Syria, in Iraq, in so many countries, there are some war actions, some terrorism uh, and terror attacks happening in, in the cities where there is yeah. no war. But if it happens every time, so I can't find another word rather than really I'm scared. I'm scared for the future generations as well. But you say, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. But you see that this last year, from May, because uh, Akinji started, uh, Mr. Akinji started uh, 30th of April 2015, so he is ruling the country almost for one year, and they're meeting very often. We cannot compare it mm -hmm. with the previous president of TRNC, 
when for eight months they didn't have any talks at all, no negotiations at all. Uh, and we go, they go together to cinemas, they go together to dinners, and today they're meeting again. And even um, also because I have some, uh, I was getting ready for the program, <laughs> <laughs> UN official, uh, he said that, uh, that they are very close to the solution and that even they uh, sorted out 90% of the territories and only 10% of the territories is under the question mark who it's going to belong, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if we speak about Morfu, which is Güzelürt in Turkish, uh, again, Erdogan says Morfu cannot be returned. Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan drew criticism for saying Morfu shouldn't be given back to Greek Cypriots after they rejected the Annan plan a decade ago. So we know what kind of plan we are talking mm -hmm. about. It's 2004 when Turkish Cypriot accepted it, Greek Cypriot rejected it. Uh, so mm, a property question and the territorial question is the most difficult ones, the most difficult to solve. What do you think, what's your vision on this problem? At the moment, they can sort everything out. Two things for me, uh, very difficult to sort out between two uh, community. One of them is property uh, problem, and other one is the uh, strategy, like f army. Mm. Uh, firstly, like property. Greek Cypriots left so much house and lands on this side. Mm -hmm. And they ha still have original uh, titles. Which title is deeds. Yes, title deeds. Which is uh, every country in the world except Turkey recognize this title. <laughs> and they have right to ask, mm -hmm. I want my land back. But what is the problem here now? If somebody come out and say, Turkey or United Nations or America, okay, we will pay you money for your land, for your house, this problem will finish. Problem but is the money. But there is a commission on the Turkish side, compensation commission. Mm -hmm. As far as I know, it started working in uh, 2011 and they paid already some compensations or it's just a rumors. This commission really exists. I know these commissions uh, exist, but some big monies we're talking about, some, some areas. You know the uh, Marash, Varosha. Yes, we'll speak about Varosha yes, later uh, also. When we come there, I tell you a few things in there, because uh, one of the like topic, Varosha, is really interest for me. I've been doing the research for it, and then I find out lots of things about the Varosha, and the hotels people been own, mm -hmm. like a Greek Cypriots. Uh, we talk about them when we come to Varosha. No, 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 we can continue. Yes, like I know the hotel uh, called Aspelia Hotel, mm -hmm. which is, uh, that one was owned by the Greek Cypriots. They stand Turkey, human being right, court in Europe. Mm -hmm. And uh, like not just them, so many people stand Turkey and they won. This is the not very little, not very little money, like 100,000 euros or 200,000 euros. Millions. We're talking about the millions of euros. Like these hotel owners, Aspelia hotel owners, they wanted from Turkey 240 million pounds. <laughs> four, four years ago, they done this uh, uh, file, and then they want uh, 240 million pounds because they've been worked out the uh, profit they lost, interest, mm -hmm. and the building is now nothing there. They have to knock it down and rebuild it again. So people asking them, it is normal, because they own this business and they lost it 42 years ago. Mm -hmm. They write to asking. So like, I'm coming back again, money. If somebody says, okay, we pay you 200 million, they will say, yes, I know that. <laughs> yeah, like I told you, the money business is the first. Secondly, army. Mm -hmm. At Turkey, they doesn't want to take the army back. They don't want to do it. Uh, strategically, they want to keep the army here. Maybe they're going to accept less soldier and take some of them away. But I don't know, Greek Cypriots, they don't want any army in the island. So this is the big problem. I don't know how they're going to sort this out. Mm -hmm. Just uh, why I am thinking, like uh, 42 years ago, my father was saying, oh, we will never see 
you know, the Greeks and Turks sort the problem out in the island. But one day you will see sun. My father used to telling to us this. But now I'm 50 years old. I Maybe can't you will say to your future <laughs> son. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> My yeah, son, you will see Cyprus United. Because the 42 years passed uh, mm. now and uh, people fed up like myself. When, when I see any news on the uh, newspaper or when I see on the television, I change the channel because I had enough with them. They just talking, 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 doing nothing. What happened? We just opened the uh, borders, few gates, people crossing the borders, other side and this side. What else happened? Nothing. Do you want the Cyprus to be the one? Of course I want because uh, I'm tourist guide and I like to introduce my country to the world. But this point at the moment, because uh, North Cyprus is not a recognized uh, country, we can't get direct flights, we can't get the tourists there directly. So they have to go to Turkey, change the flight and come back here, take them too long. Or oh, fly to Larnaca, cross the border on this side, quite difficult for them. Uh, when you uh, compare the Greek side or island and North side of the island, tourism is big difference. So if we uh, sort the problem out, the border is open and we get direct flights, all over the world, we will get more tourists and then we have a more job. Not just me. There is so many tourist guides or hotels waiting for this. Mm -hmm. So this will be really good for our side. Mm -hmm. This is going to be good for other sides as well, of course. But I don't know, we're just waiting. Waiting and see. Because they say that in May it's going to be a referendum again. It's not just, uh, of course, politicians are trying to sort the most difficult questions at the moment, yes. as you said, the property, lands, money, compensation yeah. for the lands, and the army ones. So these are the most painful, uh, as I uh, read before, I don't remember already in Russian or in English, mm -hmm. uh, they decided to leave it till the last moment. Yes. But uh, is it going to be a referendum again, like it was in 2004? So people will go and vote. Yes, of course. But before the referendum, uh, you know, that doesn't matter what the two sides presidents talking, like uh, our uh, president and their president. End of the day, Turkey, Greece and Britain have to say yes for what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. After the United Nations say you should say yes as well. And then a referendum. So uh, I think this time both sides will say yes if they sort out the property problems and army problems. Because, the, you know, uh, since more than 10 years, uh, gates are open, people crossing the border from north to south, south to north. I go sometimes other side. I have uh, some Greek Cypriot friends. We have no problem. People's got no problem anyway. Problems, is all problem is politics. Mm. I agree yeah. with you. And uh, when I was reading in Russian the speech of uh, Greek Cypriot, President Anastasiadis, he spoke about the guarantee and safety of the island, that they don't need any country guarantors here in the island. So uh, he means that they don't need either Great Britain, nor Turkey, nor Greece. So they don't need. At least he says this. Maybe they will listen to him. Uh, actually, that's I, 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 I agree with him. I agree with him. This island, you, you, you live here long enough. You know Cyprus is a beautiful island, like a paradise. Uh, but we have so much soldiers in the island. Uh, sometimes people are scared to come here. Because sometimes you're going, uh, walking in the mountains, which is my expert. I do the walking, uh, trekking in the mountains. Uh, army practicing, bombing around, bombing the uh, mountains and everything. And people are scared. They say, what's going on? What's going on? We come here on holiday. We, know we didn't come here for uh, hear this noisy. I agree with him. We don't need anybody. Like they say, no Greece, no Turkey, no Britain. But we turning and then coming again, strategy. Like an army business. Turkey only got one island in Mediterranean. They have army bases there. They don't want to give up. We're going there straight away. Yes, now that is the problem, that is the problem. And Turkey will never give up, never, they will never take whole army back to Turkey. So this is, Greek Cypriots should accept this if they want. Mm -hmm. 
to sort the problem out in the island, Turkey will never give up Cyprus with their army. They are going to keep some army, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. We need to uh, stop for a short advertisement. Okay. Uh, дорогие телезрители, uh, сейчас мы прервемся на небольшую рекламу, после чего мы продолжим на интереснейшую беседу с моим гостем Энгеном Шаховым. Оставайтесь вместе с нами. Дорогие телезрители, мы снова в студии. Сегодня мы обсуждаем тему Кипр до 1974 -го года и после 1974 -го года. Поэтому в гостях у меня сегодня, можно сказать, не то что эксперт, но человек, который живет в этой стране, местный человек, занимается туризмом. Энгин Шах, welcome once again to the studio. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us today. So, uh, before going to, uh, to advertise, when I sta start mixing words already, <laughs> English, Turkish, <laughs> Russians, uh, before going to advertisement, we were speaking about the current situation on the island. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would like you to ask the question, after everything started, uh, not started actually, it was the start and the beginning at the same, uh, and the finish at the same time, 1974, mm -hmm. when the war happened. So, uh, in all those years, because how we can judge, uh, Russian people started coming here, first ones came maybe 20 years ago, but it was just one, two, mm -hmm. three people. Mostly they started coming right now. Me, I'm here for, I've been here for 10 years. Again, uh, I saw already different island. So if you describe shortly the period from 1974 up to let's say maybe present days how was the island going after the war after the war uh, we didn't have a republic of northern cyprus we had a uh, firstly uh, cyprus turkish federation uh, and in 1983 we had our government uh, uh, november 1983 uh, before 1983, everything was good actually. Our uh, people was doing uh, trade with the Europe, Arabic countries. So there Middle was Street. no embargo at that time. No, no, no. It was it was quite good, and the people were making money. Tourism was good too. Uh, everything was all right after our government, uh, Republic of Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus, uh, mm -hmm. come out. Uh, like Europe, and then lots of countries stop doing trade with the North Cyprus, and then we they put us on under uh, embargoes. Mm -hmm. So we have we have lots of we are we really really under lots of embargoes between Europe, uh, European Union, even Turkey, because Turkey trying to get in the European Union. They have agreement with European Union. Even Turkey do the embargoes to us as well. At, at the that moment. time, they did. That time they didn't before the before the uh, yes, and like so uh, 1983. Uh, after yeah, like like we were selling our oranges and grapefruits and lemons uh, via Turkey to other countries, but since that we can't sell them. We can't. We only use in Cyprus them, some of them, mm -hmm. and some of them we throwing out or we giving to animals to eat them mm -hmm. because we so we can't sell them uh, very much. Like our halloumi, we used to sell it, but now we can't. We can only sell sometimes to Arabic countries, but European Union countries, no, we can Our halloum is not going there. Goes from the Greek side, and uh, like 15, 16, 17 years ago, I don't know how long exactly ago, uh, Turkey, they closed the uh, casinos in Turkey, mm -hmm. and they opened them here. And then they start saying, uh, we have a new uh, trade between Turkey and here, gambling. Gambling is, I don't know, they call it tourism, but I don't call gambling tourism. They call it uh, gambling tourism. Uh, yes, they call it gambling because tourism. Because people but are coming not only from Turkey, they come from the Greek side, because on Greek side, as far as I, I know, know but, uh, there are no casinos from Israel, from almost all the Mediterranean people. Are they come in, but gambling. they're bringing trouble as well. Uh, if you look at ori ordinary tourists, like a uh, British tourist or German or European from European Union countries, uh, they don't choose these hotels, these big hotels, which is five star, four star with the casinos. Uh, Maybe because they're greedy. 
They don't like to spend too much money on their holiday. Not just that, because the, uh, you hear sometimes on the news some troubles this, in these hotels. Because gambling, I don't know, is, I never been to gambling. I never go to casinos myself. Uh, of course. course, some people come in the island, but these casinos, what they do, they do all inclusive. So, and these customers come and they stay in the hotel. They never come out. So, if you go to any restaurants or bars, you don't see any gamblers come out, have something to eat or drink in the bars or restaurant. Well, they need to keep them inside. Yeah, they keep them inside. Uh, they drink, they eat gambling, they lost their money, get in the plane and go back to their countries, wherever they come. So this, this is actually gambling tourism, I don't call it. But uh, I work with the British tourists, which is, they come here, I can see them, I watch them, they spend something. We take them different restaurants and bars, shopping, and I can see they're spending. But unfortunately, Turkish people, mainly Turkish people come for gambling anyway, but they don't spend very much money. Uh, go out and spending money. Only before they go, they buy some alcohol, because alcohol is cheap uh, in this country. Of course, that is a little bit help our economy as well. Mm -hmm. But uh, we have a nice restaurants, we have a nice bars, but we can't see the Turkish people in these restaurants and bars. And at the moment, after the, these uh, terrorist attacks in Turkey, of course, affecting here as well, because the tourists come here via Turkey. Mm -hmm. So they stop coming to Turkey, so automatic they stop coming here too. So at the moment, uh, whatever our uh, Minister of Tourism talking, he's saying something sometimes, but I am in the tourism. I don't see we doing anything good at the moment. I hope thing changes soon and then we get more tourists. Yes, please let's be more positive about the uh, <laughs> island and its future because uh, you know that this program is mostly watched by Russian speaking people. Of course, if I make uh, an announce that it's going to be in English, some other people will join and yes. watch it. So let's not be so negative about the future of the island. I tell you, you know, the Russian, uh, you know better than me how many Russian in uh, North Cyprus at the moment. But this Russian community here, they live here. Of course, they spend their money here. They do the shopping, they buy house, furniture and everything. They spend their money. But uh, I don't see not many Russian tourists come to North Cyprus. They come to other side very much, uh, yeah. South Cyprus. But on our side, not many of them. Sometimes I see they cross the border from South to visit on this side, but not many of them especially come in here uh, for hotels. There they just, they buy a house, I know. They buy a house, yeah. they live here very much. That is the good actually for our economy. Of course, we get some something for our economy. But tourist wise, I don't know, maybe we're not doing very much there on the Russian market. There are some specific reasons for this. Uh, as for English tourists, it's quite obvious that before it was an English colony, they know the history of the island, they mm -hmm. know that the island is divided, they know everything about this, they know that this side is cheaper in many points, yes. about the restaurants, about in many areas it's cheaper than the south and the uh, German people the same. With the Russian people, the situation is quite different. Uh, we always speak about this, that they just started coming now. And still, maybe 80%, maybe 70% of the population still don't know that the island is divided. Absolutely. Though it was divided 42 years ago, so long time ago. Still, when they hear the word Cyprus, they imagine that side of Cyprus and they don't know how is it divided what what do you mean you speak Turkish living in Cyprus so because Cyprus is divided into two parts and they don't know about this that's why uh, why they start coming here to buy property because there is a very big propaganda in internet uh, being started by real estate agents mm -hmm. because they also uh, saw the potential of the island so they started giving more and more advertisement in the website. They start uh, making more websites and, being, and made them optimized. That's why people started coming. 
uh, as for tourism, again, for many years, because of the, uh, let's say, embargoes, uh, embargoes, uh, the word which is more applicable to economy, but because of this, like Iron Curtain, people don't know. They don't yes. know anything about this. So tourism is just started to develop. And uh, though uh, people from north go to uh, Moscow exhibitions every year for 10 years, maybe, maybe even more, uh, but still they don't know too much about. And again, as you said before, there is no direct flights, Absolutely. which makes the situation much more complicated for them. And now, it was going so well, really. Uh, but when we faced the situation that Turkey has a problem now with Russia, again, it had some influence uh, into northern, uh, on Northern Cyprus, though in every program, again, in Russian, I keep on saying to our Russian viewers that there is no connection, big connection between Turkey and Northern Cyprus. Northern Cyprus hasn't done anything to Russia. <laughs> Cypriot people didn't do anything to Russian people and they're still welcoming Russian people. Of and course. Because my family called me a few times saying, oh, how are you? Everything is okay. Maybe you are under attack there. Maybe <laughs> you are uh, <laughs> trying to hide somewhere. No, it's not. It's quiet here and nothing has happened and nothing has changed to us. We, work, we are working like before and we are living like before. So um, that's why uh, I want to be more optimistic about the progress. You know, we need to explain people, like you say, 70% Russian people, they don't know Cyprus is two parts. And some people know, but some people thinking north part of the island is belongs Turkey, yeah. part of Turkey. Yes. So few times I have been absolutely uh, correct. A few they times think that it belongs. Few to times Turkey. I've been talking with some Russian tourists. They say, uh, uh, like uh, this is part of Turkey, and then you voting uh, for Turkish uh, pre like uh, president uh, elections and then uh, prime minister elections and everything. They are asking these questions. That we explaining them. We telling them this is the different republic, different country, completely different. Nothing to do. Of course, we have a relation with Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, but we are completely different government. We have a different government. We have a different president, different prime minister. Uh, of course, uh, <laughs> we can't do nothing without they say anything. Uh, they have to order us to do this, do this. But we have a, a different republic here. It is safe for mm -hmm. them to come here. Uh, they change fl uh, flight in Istanbul, get in the other plane, and they're here. Mm -hmm. So nothing happens to them. They're welcome. Uh, another question. Uh, also today, uh, getting ready for the program, I read that uh, TRNC are getting ready uh, to enter the European Union. Yes. And uh, they're going to change the currency for Euro. Have mm -hmm. you heard about this? Yes, I heard about this. And? Uh, what is your I think opinion? it is a good idea. Because at the moment, you here long enough. You know the situation. Uh, like, we have uh, our government. Uh, we don't have our own money. We're using Turkish, Turkish money. Turkish money. Uh, I think uh, we are a uh, very interesting country. We have a central bank of Cyprus, which is only one in the world who not uh, pressing any money. <laughs> we get it ready from Turkey. <laughs> 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 I think this is only one in the world. We have our republic, we have our government, parliament, president and everything. But we're using somebody else's. Of course, Turkey is the, our motherland. Uh, I'm not saying anything for that. But if we have uh, our own government, we should have uh, our own money. Uh, everything our own should be. But, but unfortunately, will it, will it happen just in the case of uh, reunification or? Yes, it can uh, if, we, uh, if we use, I think after uh, reunited, I don't think so before 
uh, sort the problem out. Mm -hmm. At the moment, you see, people pay rent in English money. People buy cars, pay uh, English money. People buy house, pay English money. Why? Sterling. So why? Why? Uh, this, is, this is funny. And uh, people losing lots of money about this. Like two years ago, one pound was 2.7 Turkish lira. Today, 4.3. Look how much people losing. Two years ago, you was paying uh, 1,500 Turkish lira a month rent. Now you're paying over 2,000 uh, 2, lira. This is not right. If we're using Turkish money officially here, we should sell or buy or rent. In the Everything same currency. Same course. currency. But they're doing nothing. Government doing nothing. I like actually, we use euros. So if it, if we know, it's only euro. I get paid in euro. I pay my rent in euro. I pay my uh, house by house with euro. Buy car with euro. That time everything's be okay. But at the moment, so many money turning around. Dollars, euros, sterling, Turkish money. What's <laughs> going on? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, it's yeah, like it's North Cyprus. It's very system. interesting country. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Maybe one of the most interesting <laughs> countries in the world. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Sometimes things happen uh, very funny, like uh, our pa parliament. Two uh, political parties, people been thinking these two parties will never ever come together in one government. But look at this in our uh, parliament. Everything can happen in this country. Maybe because uh, the country is so small and people are somehow <laughs> connected. Uh, they have relative connections. Of they course. They have uh, different kind of friendship connections. That's why it's... <laughs> 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 Maybe. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to say anything bad about the country I'm living in. Uh, but uh, it's just still developing itself even about the political system and everything i still think that all this happened as you said two parties would never be together and now they are again together or not again they are together maybe because the island is small people are so much connected uh, yes like you know the before you told me um, like uh, erdogan says uh, güzel yurt will never give back but we have to give something back. Because uh, like uh, 19, before 1974, we had only Turkish people had only 12, 13% of the lands. So we have 34% now. And most of the villages, especially on the border side, Turkish military, Turkish army using them. Mm. Of course, we, what, what's going to happen if the army go back? If army go back, we give these villages back. Of course, Greek Cypriots want whatever they can get. Yeah, as much as they can uh, absolutely get. they they want so we want this we want that we want that that's not means we're giving them but when they want them like we coming back again money business like people own things in the uh, Güzel yurt greek cypriots when you offer them money okay your house we give you half a million uh, dollars for this i'm sure they will say yes okay i don't want it give me my money then yeah, because, because everybody so like 42 years time. gone now everybody settled now greek cypriots settled there we settle here now. I have house on the Greek land. If somebody wants to take that house off me, they should kill me. <laughs> and then I don't want to pay anything out as well, because I paid enough, and <laughs> I moved in my house. They should, they should kill me and then move me out from there. No, of course, property <laughs> issue is the most uh, absolutely, absolutely. complicated one. And uh, not only you, but I think uh, so many Greek people lived in Karini as well. So I spoke to many local people here. And they said the same, uh, that if they want to take my home, they need to kill me. Because it's impossible that I will give it just for like this, take it, and uh, where I'm going to go, Absolutely. outside, to the street. I, again, I'm not speaking about people from the mainland who came after the war, during the war. Uh, I'm speaking about local people mm -hmm. who's been living here for centuries. Yes. So yes. that's why this problem, of course, should be somehow sorted out. And uh, coming back to Varosha, uh, today I read a very interesting article, Varosha to be turned into a smart city blueprint. So uh, the Turkish-held ghost town of Varosha could be turned into a smart city 
if an ambitious blueprint, which is almost complete, is implemented following a concept initiated by the uh, group. <laughs> <laughs> One, uh, I think this is a um, Greek group. This, of course, depends on the town which has been inhabited, uh, uninhabited since summer of 1974 following Turkish invasion. Invasion, we are using this term again being returned to its lawful Greek Cypriot inhabitants who will undertake its reconstruction. So I'll not read the whole article, but yes. they say that uh, they are going, if, for example, the solution will be taken, do you think that TRNC is going to give Varosha to the Greek side? Because they will. Because they will. Uh, the uh, there will be some kind of conference and there was kind of mm -hmm. conference about this city because really for 42 years very nice place very nice beaches and uh, it was one of the most popular place in the world because before everything yes. started uh, that uh, most probably top ranking members of high-tech giants such as Microsoft and Intel will take part mm -hmm. in, uh, cons not in construction, but making the city like an intellectual city. Yes. Varosha is a very interesting place. For 42 years, that city is finished. For me, I can't see the buildings anymore because they must all come down. Very big job there, very long job there. Probably uh, we need five, six years, seven years to just uh, clean up. Like, I... I, I I reckon we need minimum 10, 12 years to build up that city again. So it's a long time. It's not very short time. Mm -hmm. Because three years ago, last time I've been in the city, I walk around. That finished now. No roads, no buildings and everything. Everything must come down, including the hotels on the coastline. Everything must come down and city must rebuild again. And we must give it back. It's not ours. Turkish army in there since 1974, but Varosha wasn't ours. Mm. Not many Turkish Cypriot owns. Mostly Greek. Yes, mostly Greek Cypriots and there. foreign owners own the hotels and bars and restaurants there. So we must give it back. But again, we going back again. The who is going to knock it down? Then who is going to rebuild it? Who is going to pay compensation to people who owns uh, uh, these hotels and buildings and everything? We there again. We come in there again. And if somebody come out and say, okay, we pay money to rebuild the city and we pay money for the uh, ex-owners, and this problem will sort it out. But take time. Okay, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we are limited in time. So uh, as our pro program has a name objective, we were yes. trying to speak objectively today. That's <laughs> why you were a guest. Uh, and just a few words, just a few words, giving your positive <laughs> forecast <laughs> of the island <laughs> for our viewers. Uh, Cyprus is a beautiful island. Um, I invite everybody uh, to come visit Cyprus. I hope soon both side presidents agree everything. Turkey, Greece, Britain, America, United Nations agrees everything. And the peace coming back to Cyprus. And everybody all over the world will be enjoying our beautiful Cyprus. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ingil. <laughs> Thank you for Thank joining you. us today. <laughs> Thank you, Alessia. Uh, с вами была программа Объектив, и я ее ведущая Олеся Ларина. Увидимся через неделю. До свидания.
генеральный спонсор программы – компания Leverage Investments, лидер рынка недвижимости Северного Кипра.